Morning folks. Welcome to this Easter season. This is sometimes called Holy Week. I thought this week for our Monday, Wednesday and Friday, uh, I would just read some of the events that happened in the Holy Week leading up to the cross and the resurrection. And I would take those readings from the book of Matthew. So over a quarter of the book of Matthew is devoted to the last week before Jesus' death. All of scripture builds to this pivotal week, pointing to the moment when Jesus would bear the weight of humanity's sin. As you prepare for Easter, this week's reading plan will guide you through some of the critical moments in scripture leading up to Jesus' death and resurrection. And our devotions are modified from exalting Jesus in Matthew from the Christ-centered exposition commentary series by David Platt. First of all, let me read to you Matthew 21, verses 12 to 19. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It's written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants? You, Lord, have called forth your praise. And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. Early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. And then he said to it, May you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. Let's pray. Father, when we read your word together, as ever, Lord, we just ask you to send your Holy Spirit to help us to appreciate all of the truths that you have in it. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, who is this Jesus? There are many things we could say about him, but first and foremost, he's the Holy King. A prophecy made around 500 years before Jesus came witnesses to Christ's holiness and purity. Based on the prophecy in Malachi 3, 1-4, the Jewish people expected the Messiah to come and purify the temple and the people of Jerusalem. I won't read these extra scriptures to you, but I challenge you to look up Malachi 3, 1-4. It's quite amazing. And Jesus fulfills these expectations in a way that the people could never have expected. Malachi speaks of God's messenger restoring the worship life of the people of God and purifying the priests. But once again, Jesus fulfills these expectations in a way the people could never have expected. He walked into a scene where people were bustling in the outer court of the temple, known also as the court of the Gentiles, a place for the nation to meet with God in worship, praise and prayer. Instead of such worship, however, Jesus found a commercial business filled with scores of people selling sacrifices and exchanging money. People were profiting off one another and even taking advantage of one another, all while ignoring the purpose of the temple. So Jesus, in righteous anger, drove them all out, overturning their tables and their seats. And he said to them, it's written, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of thieves. In Isaiah 56, 7, God says that his house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Yet here in Matthew 21, the people of God were preventing the nations from praying. In the second part of verse 13, Jesus says that God's house has been made into a den of thieves. This is likely a reference to Jeremiah 7, 10, which was a temple address in which God disciplined his people for offering ritual sacrifices while living in total disobedience to him. This hideout for criminals against God needed to be restored to a house of prayer for God. God's people were offering worship in Jeremiah's day, yet they did not behave in obedience to God. Jesus walked into a similar situation in Matthew 21, and as a holy king, he came to cleanse and purify God's temple. This hideout for criminals against God needed to be restored to a house of prayer for God. 
Jesus does not deal with sin lightly, but in righteous anger. And this leads to the next attribute of Jesus. Jesus has the right to cleanse the temple because he is the authoritative king. In this chapter and the chapters that follow, Jesus' authority is put on display. This section of Matthew's Gospel has been referred to as Jesus' final break with Judaism, for he takes the religious leaders of Jerusalem head on, making claims that they considered blasphemous, claims that would lead them to crucify him. Consider the authority Jesus demonstrates. Jesus had made clear in Matthew 12, 6 that he is greater than the temple. Indeed, he is Lord of the temple, and he has the right to do in it whatever he desires, including throwing it into disarray. It must have been quite shocking for Jewish leaders who prided themselves in religious practices at the temple to have Jesus come in and turn it upside down. Who does he think he is? He's in charge of this place? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, he is. Let's pray. Father, in this week leading up to Easter, I pray that you take us step by step and infuse truth into our being so that we can remember and see Jesus for who he is and recommit our lives again to follow him. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, I hope that that is helpful to you and I'll see you in a couple of days' time. God bless you.